Hello guys and welcome back to another video and today I am in the BMW 130i and I kind of just want to do a full diagnostics check today. Um, I, have my, I have my laptop, I have my DCAN cable, we obviously have ISTA on the laptop and uh, yeah I want to kind of do a full diagnostics check um, with ISTA because Although I haven't really noticed any, um, you know, issues, you know, any running issues, I haven't uh, noticed any uh, error codes display on the dash. I kind of want to just see what all of the modules are saying. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things with ISTA. Um, you may think that your car is running uh, completely fine. You may think everything's working as it should. Um, but it's it's when you it's when you get it hooked up to ISTA and when you run the diagnostics check that you actually find out there is um, some errors. Now I don't think this car is going to be completely uh, flawless. You know it is 15 years old. It does have some deferred uh, maintenance to say the least. Um, so I think today we are going to be in for a few uh, surprises. Um, but yeah, without further ado, I think we should uh, get the decan cable plugged into the OBD2. And, uh, and then plugged into the laptop. Okay then, so here we are on the laptop. First thing we're gonna do is load up its today. Yes. Usually takes around 20 or 30 seconds to open it up, depending on how fast your processor is. Here we go, so we'll just open it right up. Now what we're going to do is head over to operations and then straight away we are going to click uh, read out vehicle data and it will ask you to switch on your ignition so we're going to go ahead and do that now. And then complete identification. Okay, so for some reason it's, uh, it seems to be resetting the most. Don't know why that is, but yeah, I'm just gonna let that, uh, let that go ahead and reset. And I just wanna point out as well, while we are using ISTA, I'm actually uh, keeping an eye on the voltage. Uh, I have a little voltage reader down there that's staying at 12 volts. You don't really want it to dip below 12 volts because you could uh, run the risk of doing some damage to your modules so it's definitely keeping an eye on the voltage of the battery okay then so here we are we are now loading up the control unit tree which displays all of your modules and this is where we will see straight away if there is any fault code stored in any of the modules so straight away before it's even finally loaded up we can see we have at least one fault code stored in the JBE and we have at least one fault code displayed in the DME and it looks like in the MOLF module that looks like it's not even responding so we could have a issue there but apart from those three we look to be okay at the moment Okay then, so the vehicle test has finished now and as we can see in the bottom left hand corner we have four codes stored in the fault memory and like I said it, the issues look to be in the uh, MOLF module, the JBE module and the DME. So we will uh, investigate that a little bit further by showing display fault memory and here is what we have then so looks like we have a fault code in the uh, AUC sensor uh, so that is the that's in the JBE module that's the AUC sensor and the DME uh, looks like it's showing crankshaft, exhaust, camshaft reference, uh, existent, no. So that could be an old fault code. Um, 
this is the one in the MULF. So no communication possible with the telephone control unit, the TCU. So we may have a problem with that module or it may just be unplugged. So we will, we will actually um, physically inspect that module at some point. There may be some water back there. Um, I don't know, I'll have to do a little bit more investigating. Uh, the most system, uh, most ring break. That's interesting. It doesn't even know if that's existent or not. Um, but the AUC sensor, I'm uh, pretty sure that is the, I'm not too sure what it stands for, but essentially essentially, it, um, it reads the air coming into the cabin and um, essentially um, smells it for any um, you know toxins or anything that's coming into the cabin so you have a you have a good quality of air coming through coming through um, so that could be a could be an issue with the AUC sensor itself um, but I think I think the first thing we need to do is go ahead and def delete the fault memory and then do another test because obviously some of these may be historic um, so we need to clear them so we will click yes Switch off the ignition and remove the ignition key with remote control. So I'm going to switch the ignition off. And then we just have to wait. And then we can switch the ignition back on. And then it will continue deleting the fault memory. Okay, so after deleting the fault memory, it's still showing that we have two faults. So I'm guessing that these uh, could be something a little more serious, but we are gonna go ahead and uh, restart the test. So I'm gonna go over to operations, read out vehicle data and complete identification again. And this should actually give us our current fault rather than our historic fault uh, because obviously we have uh, done the test once and then we've cleared them uh, doing the test again should give us our faults that are currently existing in the modules and again it's doing a most reset I'm not too sure why it does that okay and so it is finally reading the fault memory again and it does look like we are going to have two faults which were present after we uh, after we went ahead and cleared them. I'm definitely thinking we have something wrong with our morph module. Um, that would mean that the Bluetooth function wouldn't work, which I haven't actually tried. Um, but yeah, I'm guessing we definitely have an issue with that. So then, just to confirm, yeah, the junction box electronics and then the MOLF uh, module are shown faults. Display fault memory. Um, okay, so the JBE AUC sensor. So I'm guessing we have a uh, faulty AUC sensor. Um, and then for the uh, MOLF module, it's just saying no communication possible with telephone control unit, the TCU. Okay then, so it looks like we don't have any major issues then, uh, again, just with the AUC sensor and the TCU. Um, we will investigate these when I have some time, uh, but I just thought it'd be good to show you a diagnostics check using ISTA. Uh, it's a brilliant piece of kit. It's, it's something that you definitely need to uh, have if you plan on working on your own car. Uh, it's great just for um, fault finding, you know, to uh, view and clear any faults that you have. And, um, you know, it's not going to miss any. Any faults that you have in any of your modules, uh, it's going to show them up right away. It, it's not going to, um, it's not going to try and hide them from you. Um, so if you plan on working on your own BMW, uh, then ISTA is something definitely that uh, that you need. Uh, this is only one of the uh, many features that ISTA has as well. It, it has a, a lot more features than just doing a uh, simple diagnostics check but I just thought this would be a good uh, starting point for this car because obviously uh, we had no prior knowledge of what 
uh, kind of state the car was in so it was a, a good idea to do this test today okay then so that is the diagnostics check using ISTA uh, on the 130i done um, nothing really too uh, concerning you know it's, it seems that we have a fault with the AUC sensor which I'm pretty sure is in the uh, engine bay uh, and then a problem with the with the move module with the um, TCU uh, which I'm pretty sure is in the boot um, I ha like I said I haven't actually tried to use the Bluetooth device you know I don't I don't really use, I don't really drive this car a whole lot it's more of just a um, a fun little weekend car you could say um, but I would quite like to get it working you know I don't like having things that don't work on the car um, so yeah we will uh, be investigating that at some point um, but yeah like I, like I said you know it's definitely worth having ISTA if you want to work on your own car um, you know if you want to work on your own BMW you, you need to have ISTA you know you can get it very very cheap you know you can get yourself um, the required cable whether it's the um, whether it's the DCAN cable or the ENET cable whichever car you need if it's the E or the F series chassis um, and yeah it, it's it's one thing that you definitely need it's there's no point going to the dealership just to get them to clear a code because you're probably looking at about a hundred pound uh, for them to do that so yeah don't don't try and work on your BMW using a cheap generic scanner. Um, save yourself the uh, time and headaches and just go ahead and get ISTA. It's, um, it really is a, a wonderful tool and it's what they, what they use in the BMW dealerships. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. Uh, but yeah, I think, that's, uh, I think that's, that's about it. You know, we've done the diagnostics check. We found out what is actually wrong with the car, you know, because this is one of these things that you uh, really cannot see unless you really, you know, dive in and uh, actually do a diagnostic check. But yeah, nothing too worrying. Um, I hope this video has been somewhat helpful. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I'll see you all in that next one. Peace.